This is Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vinman. He serves as a top-level staffer on the National Security Council. Task and Purpose today obtained a copy of his Army service record. Shows that he has served in the U.S. Army on active duty for more than 20 years. Joined the Army in 1999 as an infantry officer. In 2004, he deployed to the war in Iraq. He was wounded in combat. He nevertheless stayed in theater, finished his deployment, returned to the States in 2005. He's earned the Combat Infantryman Badge, which is awarded to infantry soldiers who have fought in active ground combat. He's earned the Ranger Tab, which means he's been through Ranger School. He's got a parachutist badge, which means he's gone through Army Airborne School. He wears the Expert Infantryman badge, in addition to his Purple Heart for being wounded in combat. If you want to try to put a name to all of those medals that he bears on his chest in his dress uniform today, it would take you a long time to do it as a civilian to match all of his awards with all of the medals on his chest. Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vinman has just recently, just within the last few minutes, left the secure hearing room where the impeachment proceedings were hearing his testimony today. He was there for more than 10 hours. Despite his decades of unblemished and selfless service to this country, including being wounded in combat, he was denounced today by the president of the United States. He was denounced by the president's supporters in conservative media, including on the Fox News channel. He was denounced by the president's squeaky clean, totally above suspicion, personal lawyer in this matter, Rudy Giuliani. Giuliani's denouncing the colonel. The conservative media, the president, Rudy Giuliani, all casting aspersions and basically trying to bring down hell on Colonel Vinman for the crime of him testifying under oath in the impeachment proceedings about the president's call to the leader of Ukraine, in which the president solicited help against the Democrats and Joe Biden from a foreign country, we also know from Colonel Vinman's opening statement, which was released by his lawyers late last night, that the colonel also recounted himself internally raising alarm about the president's improper and dangerous behavior in the way that he was trying to extort Ukraine for help in a personal political matter. He brought those issues up through the chain of command internally before he ever consented to speak with these committees today in response to the subpoena that they gave him. And we are used to the president and his supporters, and in particular the conservative media, you know, denouncing and trying to destroy anybody who speaks against the president's interests in any context, right? Go back to the Republican National Convention, right? Or excuse me, to the Democratic National Convention, and remember the president's denunciations of a Gold Star family that lost their son in war for this country, right? We expect it to a certain degree. But it is still jarring to see them do it today to a 20-year military officer who they have decided to impugn as suspicious. They've decided to question his patriotism, in his case specifically because he comes from an immigrant family. So therefore, he can't really be an American. There were reports today that Republicans continue to use their time in these impeachment proceedings behind closed doors to try to unmask the initial whistleblower initial intelligence official, according to reports, whose complaint first alerted Congress about what had happened between President Trump and the leader of Ukraine. That whistleblower's complaint, of course, has been multiply corroborated by lots of different Trump administration officials, including officials from the State Department and the Defense Department, and now an official from the White House. I mean, the basic claims of an improper quid pro quo between the president trying to extort something out of Ukraine has also been corroborated by the president's own chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney. It's even been corroborated by the president's hand-picked Trump donor ambassador, million-dollar Trump donor Gordon Sondland, who's been named by multiple witnesses now as one of the key, one of the key people who was involved in carrying out this scheme. He himself has corroborated the account that this was an improper quid pro quo the president was waging to try to help himself get reelected with the help of this foreign power that he was basically extorting to get them to do so. Today, we got this eight-page draft from the House of Representatives laying out their rules, their expected format for the next phase of the impeachment inquiry as it moves from closed-door depositions to open public hearings. As first reported by the New York Times last night, the resolution, in fact, shows that the questioning at these forthcoming public hearings may, in fact, be led by professional committee staff rather than just by individual members of Congress, which is a blessing to anyone hoping those hearings will tell a coherent story of what happened here. It's not just going to be members of Congress getting in their five minutes of incoherent questioning. It's going to be trained committee staff who have continuity, who are following up with witnesses without being on a time five-minute clock.
And so this is, this is moving. It is increasingly serious, both for the president and his supporters in terms of his behavior that has been exposed and the closed off, closing off of all of the various doors they've tried to sneak out of in terms of trying to avoid the core question at the heart of the impeachment. It's getting increasingly serious, and it's being handled with seriousness by the Democrats that, that shows, I think, it gives us some sense of how this is going to play out in a way that's not, just not going to get better over time for the president, let alone his supporters who've been saying nothing happened. So the impeachment proceeding proceeds apace. But do not sleep on the criminal case that proceeds alongside it and in parallel with these Capitol Hill proceedings. I mean, two of the people involved in carrying out this scheme on behalf of the president are already under arrest. The president's lawyer, who was apparently running point on this scheme and who was apparently being paid by those guys is reportedly a person of interest in two different federal investigations being run out of the Southern District of New York. Politico.com has recently reported that Maine Justice, meaning the Justice Department headquarters in Washington, may be horning in on those SDNY investigations of Rudy Giuliani. And who knows what that means? It may indicate some effort by Attorney General Bill Barr to try to shield Mr. Giuliani from what SDNY would otherwise be doing or concluding in his case. But this is, there's two things going on here. There's the impeachment and there's this criminal fight. This is not just your average Washington fight over, you know, bad faith and bad actors. This is criminal too. And it involves some fairly serious crooks. And we're nowhere near out of those woods yet. Lots to come tonight. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.